Hello, Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to this video for section 3.2, part one. Before we get into that, though, I'd like to review 3.1. So I have two questions that I'd like to do with you. First one, identify the y-intercept of the graph of this quadratic function, f of x equals a times x minus p squared plus q. So we're doing this in general. So the key here is that a y-intercept is a point, and it's a point in which x is 0. So it has a coordinate of 0 and y. So to figure out what the y-intercept is, all I let is x be 0, and then I can solve for y. So really what I'm finding is f of 0. So I'm replacing x with 0, and then I'm solving or simplifying what's left. So f of 0 is equal to a times 0 take away p is negative p squared. So f of 0 is equal to negative p squared means negative p times negative p, which is positive p squared. So it's a times p squared all plus q. So that will be the y-intercept, making D the correct answer. In this question here, a quadratic function has a vertex at point M and negative N with a value of A being greater than zero. How many zeros does the graph have? So let's think here. If the vertex is at M and negative N, the vertex is at M and negative N, so that is a positive and a negative value, which makes it in quadrant four. So positive x, negative y, so my vertex is somewhere there, m and negative n. Now, if a is positive, that means I have a parabola that opens up. So it's going to look something like this. So without knowing exactly what a is, what m and n are, we have a general idea of what it looks like. But no matter how it looks, I can see it clearly has two x-intercepts one here and one here. So I know that there are two x-intercepts. Okay, let's look at section 3.2, investigating quadratic functions in standard form this time. So 3.1 was all about vertex form, now we're talking about standard form. So in 3.1, this is vertex form. Again, it's called that because I can see what my vertex is. This one here is called standard form. Sometimes it's called general form. This is what you were used to seeing a quadratic in 10C. So it's ax squared plus bx plus c. So we're going to investigate this part of, or this form of a quadratic and compare it to what we did in 3.1. So let me just start with a yes, no question for everything here. I want to know if we can determine the following from just the equation alone, just looking at the equation. So looking at this equation, can I determine the vertical stretch? Well, the vertical stretch is the a value, and see here, this a value is the same as this a value here. So I can definitely tell the vertical stretch. That's my a value. I can also tell the direction of the opening, because if a, in this case here, is negative, I know it opens down. I can't see the vertex, and that is a big problem. Since I can't see the vertex, I don't know what the axis of symmetry is. I don't know, well, I know it opens down, so it has a maximum, but I don't know what it is. I don't know the number of x-intercepts, and I therefore also don't know the range. So a lot of things just by not knowing the vertex that I don't know. Okay, I do know the number of y-intercepts because remember, every parabola has one y-intercept. And I do know the domain because all quadratics have the same domain, which is x is an element to the reals. So there are a lot of things in this graph, in this equation, sorry, that I don't know just because I can't tell what the vertex is from looking at it. So we're going to have to use our graphing calculator to find all of these important points, the vertex being the most important point. So here's your steps that we're going to follow to find the vertex on our graphing calculator. The very first thing we're going to do is enter into Y1 our equation and we're going to hit graph. So let me just look at that. So on my calculator here I have the equation negative x squared plus 2x plus 8. And I am just going to hit graph. I'm going to do zoom 6 to make sure I have a good window. That's the normal window if you guys hit graph. So there I can see the parabola. I know it opens down, and it therefore has a maximum. So I want to calculate what that maximum is. So I'm going to go into my calculate menu, which is second and trace. 
second trace is my calculate menu and everything I need is in this menu here. So I want to calculate the vertex and the vertex is a maximum point. So I'm going to choose maximum, option number four. So I go down here, choose option number four. Now the calculator needs help with this. So I know my vertex is here and the calculator needs to know when am I to the left, when am I to the right so I can calculate it. So here I'm to the left. You don't have to go all the way, you're just to the left. Press enter. I'm not to the right. I have to use my arrow keys to toggle over to the right hand side. So just anywhere on the right hand side and press enter. We don't want to guess so we'll press enter and there is my vertex, 0.9999989, we'll call that one, and nine. So now that I know my vertex, I can figure out all those other things on the list. So again, I see that I have a maximum, I did left bound, right bound, enter, and I found my vertex was one and nine. Okay, let's talk about finding the y-intercept. So our equation is into y1, we're going to press graph, and then we're going to use trace. So trace is a really great um, part of our calculator. Trace is if you tell the calculator the x value, it will give you the y value that goes with it. So looking at this here, I can go back to my calculator and I can hit trace, zero. So see it's saying when x is zero, if you press enter, it'll tell you the y value that goes with it and it'll show you. So trace, zero, enter, and you can see I get zero and eight. So I know that my y-intercept is eight. Okay, so that's exactly what I did. So trace gives an x value. If you give the calculator an x value, it will give you the y value. So trace zero gives us the y-intercept of eight. Now, a little tip for you, you don't have to use your calculator because in standard form, C, the lonely number all by itself, is the y-intercept. So I could see just looking at my equation that the y-intercept was eight, but you can put it into your calculator as well. Okay, let's talk about how we find the x-intercepts. So this is the point that the graph crosses the x-axis. So in Y1 right now, we have our equation in y2 we're going to put zero which will graph the x-axis and then we will look to see where they intersect so let's go into our calculator go into y equals i'm going to go into y2 and enter in zero if my calculator will cooperate there we are okay so i'm going to go over here and enter in zero so it graphs my graph and the y in the x-axis y equal to zero so i'm going to go back into my calculate menu second trace and i'm going to choose option five i want to know where this graph intersects the x-axis so press five now i always press down arrow so i'm on and i can see right here i'm on the x-axis because then it's super easy i just go left and right so let's go over here and press enter three times one two three there's my first x intercept at negative two let's do that again on the other side so second trace option five down arrow see now i'm on the x-axis and then just go over to the right hand side and press enter three times and i get my other x intercept at four so that's exactly what i did here my two intersection points negative two and positive four so just a couple little graphing calculator tips. You saw this one that I did originally. I did zoom six, and zoom six takes you to your standard window setting from negative 10 to 10 up by one for X, negative 10 to 10 up by one for Y. So that's a good tip, especially when we're doing word problems where we're gonna be changing our window setting. The other thing is sometimes getting zero in disguise. So zero in disguise would be something like this. I get an X value of, we'll say 5.9, but look at my Y value. This is actually in scientific notation. 1e negative 11 really means 1 times 10 to the negative 11, which is 0 0.10 zeros and a 1. So whenever you get something like that, we can just call that 0. So look for that 0 in disguise. My other tip for you when it comes to the calculator is you're either going to be using trace or second trace to find all the important parts. So trace 
or second trace. So let's try an example here. I want to sketch this function y equals x squared minus 5x minus 6. I want to label the vertex, the x-intercept, and the y-intercept. So let's start with my x-intercept. So my tip is you can put it in the calculator. I've just shown you that. But you can also find your x-intercepts by factoring. So since I haven't shown you that, let's look at factoring. So x squared minus 5x minus 6, that factors as x minus 6 and x plus 1. So I know that my x-intercept could be 6 or it could be negative 1. So I can plot those right now. So I have 6 and negative 1. Now, remember we talked about the y-intercept being the lonely number all by itself without an x value, and that's at negative 6. So right now, I've got three important parts. I know that my a value in front, there's an invisible one, and it's positive, so I know that my parabola opens up, which means I have a minimum value. So all I have to go to my calculator for is to calculate that minimum value. And I've already done that. You guys can check to see if it's right. But I got 2.5 and negative 12.25. So we're just going to do it roughly. So 2.5 and about 12 and a quarter negative. So I'll put it right there. And I'll label it as 2.5 and I'll call it negative 12.3. Now all I have to do is connect my dots. So I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just looking that you guys label them. So connecting the vertex to the x-intercept, and then I keep going with an arrow, and then connecting like that. So something like that is what my quadratic would look like. Not perfect, but everything is labeled on it, and that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so I want to practice with you guys converting from vertex form to standard form. Now, the only real benefit of this, to be honest with you, is that I can see what my y-intercept is. So what we're going to do is, this is the same quadratic, just a different format to it. We expand it by taking our binomial, writing it out two times, expanding it using the distributive property twice, and then grouping like terms. So I have a detailed example for you here. I'd just like to do one where we do it together now. So whenever you do these questions, you can always check. So on that last question, if I wanted to check if I did it right, I can put my vertex form in Y1, my standard form in Y2, and I can either see if they produce the same graph or I like to check in the table. The check always for me happens in the table. So since they are equal, I know that I've done that correctly. So something useful to keep in mind, you can always check any, quiz, any question that you do, you can check on the calculator to see if you did it right. So let's try this one. We're going to convert it to vertex form from, uh, from vertex form to standard form. So I'm going to write it out first as 2 times x plus 5 squared means x plus 5 twice. So I really recommend writing that out so you don't make the mistake of, first of all, maybe putting the 2 inside or just squaring the individual terms. So I have 2 times x plus 5 times x plus 5. So I'm going to distribute 2 in only to the first bracket. If I did it to both brackets, it would really be 2 times 2 is 4. So you only distribute it to the first set of brackets. And now I'll do the distributive property again. So 2x times x, 2x times 5, 10 times x, 10 times 5, minus 8. Okay, group my like terms. So I have 10x and 10x is 20x. And then 50 take away 8 is 42. So I can check in my calculator to see if I've done that correctly. But now I can see that my y-intercept is 42. So here's a neat way that we can check, actually. Let's see if I get 42 as the y-intercept of the first one. So y-intercept means I let x be 0. So I'm going to have 0 plus 5 squared minus 8. So I'll have 2 times 5 squared minus 8. And 5 squared is 25. 2 times 25 is 50. And 50 minus 8 is yes, 42. So I probably did that correctly. So short little lesson here. My question for you is, what happened to the quadratic polynomial when it fell asleep at the beach? Well, quadratics are second degree polynomials. 
it got second degree burns. So you guys can go ahead and do practice questions one to three. Detailed solutions, of course, are in D2L. And then you can move on to your textbook. So I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.